Today we're building and painting the Churchill MK7 from AFV. Today we're going to do a British tank to uh, make some change uh, after building uh, so much uh, German tank and US tank. So the British one, it's a different configuration, uh, different parts, different tracks, and it's going to make uh, a really good change. It's a straightforward build and if you're a beginner, that's uh, probably a kit that I really recommend because it's kind of uh, easy to assemble uh, and there's not a lot of things uh, to do and, and things like that. So if you don't want to follow the build, just go uh, on the description to uh, basically follow up on the prime job, the highlights and the base coat. It's not my first tank of uh, the AFV uh, company and normally those, uh, those products or those boxes are pretty good and pretty straightforward. So for me, after a lot of years uh, doing scale modeling, uh, I don't want to waste like, uh, I don't know, a month just by building uh, a, a plastic tank. I'm more of a... I would say I prefer to do the paint job, the weathering, and the uh, the washes or different things like that. The good thing about this kit is if you're a beginner, there's some uh, little photo watch that comes with it. It's like super tiny part. Uh, if you have a bender uh, like I have, uh, just use it. But uh, honestly, you can do it with a regular uh, hobby knife or just a, a razor blade or something like that. You're gonna also have to drill some hole, so just have a, a little drill in and you're gonna be able to do it. So honestly, AFV uh, produce some really nice kit. Uh, they do uh, not only British, but uh, they do some uh, different tanks. Uh, I think they do like a German one and also, uh, also US one. So it's a pretty good company and honestly if you just uh, start building scale modeling it's a really good thing the difference uh, on the train tracks is the assembly this one came with a spring compared to for example the um, the German tank comes with uh, like the track that you have to I would say normally assemble nowadays uh, you can basically have some rubber tracks or, or if you want to order some metal tracks like I normally do um, it's it's also pretty good but it's a different way of uh, assembly uh, assemble the, the tracks I just had to clean a little bit more uh, all the I would say the tooth of the track because I really have to uh, go through with uh, with a pin so uh, that's why I'm using uh, my uh, drill bit to go through But overall, this kit uh, fits pretty good. It's a really nice one to build. And I suggest you uh, do it yourself. Um, everything is, uh, I would say, pretty straightforward. Uh, doesn't have a lot of sanding or baby. It just, you can remove some tiny parts with your hobby knife. So it's not a big deal and it's a really fun build uh, to do. The nice thing also with this kit is uh, it comes with a middle barrel. So it's a nice add-on uh, to do. So the only, I would say, modification that I will do, I will do some cast steel texture. You can see my uh, video on the top right corner. If you didn't see it, I did a uh, specific video on how to do cast steel texture. I'm also going to add some uh, cast steel texture on the turret uh, because if you see some reference picture uh, like uh, like the Churchill has some some kind of a cast steel texture like the 
the Sherman tank or uh, even the AM, uh, the M18 Lcat, but it's not uh, all around the vehicle. It's only on certain plate at the bottom of the vehicle and also on the turret. So it's not like you don't do cast steel texture on basically everything. I'm just gonna add some uh, really, uh, really add-on that I uh, that I have in my uh, in my stash. So that's gonna be a stowage bag. That's the only thing I will add to this vehicle because it's a really nice build, and I don't want to ruin by adding some stowage or tarp or whatever. The first layer will be uh, by using uh, Mr. Surfacer uh, 1500. Uh, in uh, the black color honestly this thing is uh, is doing absolutely great um, it's basically gonna I would say mask some some not mask some details and you're gonna have a really uh, really awesome job the first highlight I will do uh, with the prime job is I will use uh, a again mr. surfacer 1500 but this one is gonna be gray and I'm just gonna highlight uh, not the recess, uh, but uh, all the uh, different highlights, um, the raised uh, area, or the place that uh, doesn't need to uh, to have some recess, some sort of dark, dark color. This way, our paint job will look fantastic because you already have some highlights, and with the paint job, you will see we're gonna use three different tones. Um, to uh, mimic the real color and the real detail of this beautiful paint job. That's the result so far. Uh, like I said, you already have some plenty of highlights and you're gonna be prepared to your first uh, base paint. The first one I will use is uh, AK Interactive uh, Dark uh, US Green uh, or US Dark Green. Um, basically, I'm just gonna focus on the uh, the raised area or the uh, the place that it's gonna be a little bit darker. Uh, I'm not gonna paint the um, the model all around. I'm just gonna focus on, I would say, um, all the different uh, tiny area, but I'm not gonna paint uh, the model uh, all around with this color. The second part of our paint job will be a mix of US Olive Drab and Deck Tan. Probably 80% Olive Drab and 20% Deck Tan. We're just going to start building some highlights. So instead of focusing on the uh, recess area, we're going to do um, the uh, raised area to build uh, some, some texture and to build our finished color. British tank are part of the, the NATO family and it's kind of building the Sherman tank or the M18 LCAT so any US tank will be kind of uh, similar so that's the result we have after our two first coat of, uh, of our paint job uh, with the two green uh, we're gonna add some uh, another layer again it's gonna be US olive drab but this time we're going to mix it with dark sand and the ratio uh, will be 70% uh, US olive drab and 30% dark sand. I say this, it, it, it's kind of the roughly, I would say, the ratio that I'm using. It's not like a, a defined uh, way of doing it, but you can figure it out by yourself if your color is too pale or too dark. Um, in this case, we're just going to focus on the uh, raised area to maximize the highlight of our uh, base color. Now it's time to paint uh, all the tools and different things like that. So I'm using uh, gunmetal uh, to paint uh, the shovel and all the pin or the hammer. Um, gunmetal is a really nice, uh, I would say, uh, base color to uh, because all, all those tools uh, are made of metal instead of the handle this one I will use old wood but the metal part uh, we will add uh, some uh, some rust stones and some rust streaks uh, a little bit after in the next uh, video 
So now I'm using old wood. It's my go-to color for any um, any wood uh, accessories on a tank. I'm using uh, flesh wash uh, again by Vallejo to just mimic the uh, wood grain. So that's the result we have. And honestly, it's a super nice result. We already have some highlights. And the only thing left uh, to this video is to add the decals. Uh, again, I have uh, a full video uh, on how to uh, not be afraid of decals uh, on my channel. So I will put the link in the top right corner. So talking about decals, if you want to practice how to uh, apply some decals this tank is for you because there's so many uh freaking decals that you have to put on depending on the area this is uh this one is built uh basically it's going to be during the normandy campaign so next week uh will be about uh starting a wash a old uh, uh, oil dot filters and different things like that so i hope you enjoyed this one see you in the next one